lucky. No one told me that this was going to be the first talk ever, so uh, no pressure. Um, but in this in the session today, uh, we're going to be talking about what Project Calico is um, and how we're using feature flags in our code, and share with you an experience that we had when feature flags, plus maybe not reading the documentation, uh, caused a little bit of complications in an environment. Uh, so. Obviously today, it's just me up here. Reza, unfortunately, couldn't make it. Um, so I was added a co-author, gambling that I would be able to make it. I think we both had passport visa questions around attending. Um, so I'm Jen. I'm a product marketing engineer at Tigera. I focus more on the commercial products that Calico offers, uh, whereas Reza is our developer advocate at Tigera. Um, so he's a lot more involved in the open source community, Project Calico. Um, and he was actually the one that put together this presentation. So unfortunately, if you do have questions, you probably don't want to ask me those questions, um, but you can find Reza in our Project Calico Slack community. Uh, so you're welcome to hit him up there. Or uh, Calico actually has a booth at KubeCon and some of our open source Project Calico developers will be there. So if you have questions about how we're using feature flags after this, uh, feel free to reach out to those people. Uh, so we'll start with an introduction on Project Calico. So Project Calico is an open source networking and network security solution, uh, which is usually associated with cloud computing and Kubernetes. And while that's true, uh, Calico can also run on bare metal and virtual machines. So to make a long list short, Calico can run anywhere and basically provide the same features in every environment. And Project Calico is free and open source. It's integrated, supported in almost every cloud provider environment. And we have big names such as NASA, Reddit, CoreWeave, Walmart, and others using it to secure their environment. And we know that these people are using it since they're normally posting PRs um, or issues on our GitHub. And I believe CoreWeave is actually running uh, Calico and they've got some massive cl clusters uh, running using it with our eBPF data plane. Um, and I believe they're normally around at KubeCon, they probably have a booth, and they're actually giving a keynote on Wednesday morning. So you could go and check that out as well. Um, and if you're running in Microsoft Azure, Calico for Windows um, is the only option if you're considering running a hybrid cluster. Um, we also offer Calico Cloud as a SaaS offering. Um, we have Calico Enterprise for in-house deployments, which offers more features. Um, and we've got companies such as Chipotle, NVIDIA, RBC, Discover, um, all using Calico for a long time. So those are the two products where I normally hang out a little bit more. And so at this point, you might be wondering why people choose Calico. Uh, so Calico is the only CNI that has a pluggable data plane. And that means that you're not bounded to a certain kernel or environment. And you can use our supported configuration and feature flags to change the networking engine in a matter of seconds, depending on your environment without redeploying a new environment. And Calico has an eBPF data plane that uses the eBPF technology to implement networking by directly communicating with the Linux kernel. Um, it also supports the standard Linux networking stack, which is a data plane based on IP tables um, or IPVS, depending on which flavor is available in your distro. Um, we also support hybrid environment and have a Windows data plane, which is based on the Microsoft HNS technology, and a VPP data plane, uh, which is vector packet processing, which is based on DPDK, um, which is a very efficient data plane for edge computing. Um, and we also just released a native NF table data plane uh, for those who are using Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9 and above since that distro stopped supporting IP tables. So what is a feature flag and why we use them? Um, I will also let you know that as Reza made this presentation, there are references in here that I may not get, so if my delivery is off, I apologize. I've never seen the matrix. Um, so as Morpheus used to say, feature flags are everywhere, or I guess a little bit of paraphrasing. Um, but in their simplest form, uh, feature flags are simple logic and variables that the developers embed in their code to change the behavior of an application, and depending on what flags are provided at any time. So that being said, uh, feature flags are attractive to us because of their ability to change the behavior without forcing a restart or a cold reboot. So yeah, feature flags require application developers to embed them inside the application. And then after you create a feature flag, you need to have a delivery system for it. Um, and this is usually referred to as a feature flag provider. And this could be JSON, YAML, or a database. 
And it could also be some sort of in-house solution uh, with REST API and charts. Or you could use something like open feature or some sort of paid options that provide a standard for your code by implementing a middle layer that can talk to various data stores. So in Calico, uh, we heavily use feature flags to enable or disable some of the features depending on the user's environment, or allow users to test new and experimental features without impacting others who are running the same software in a production environment. So for example, a pluggable data plane is actually a feature flag, and that allows anyone to run Calico with some of our data planes, or they can write their own data plane and use these flags to establish networking. This is in fact how the VPP uh, data plane was added to the project Calico. And the VPP data plane uses our data plane feature flag to integrate with Felix, uh, which you can see in the middle. Uh, that's the brain of Calico, and that implements the networking in the security and environment. Uh, the Azure PIP protocol um, is dropped by default and users will use the BGP flag to disable BGP capabilities of Calico without needing to restart the system. Uh, we also have other flags such as WireGuard for encryption um, or IPAM if you want to have a better way of managing your IP addresses. And then with every new release, we have experimental features that might require more testing that could impact stability and maybe some unforeseen circumstances. Um, and again, that's another standard use of feature flags in our software, which allows us to ship experimental features without impacting the experience of people who are already using Calico. So um, if you want to learn more about feature flagging, how you can achieve it in your next or current project, uh, we have you covered. Um, but before that, I'll let you in on a little secret. Um, all you need to know to implement feature flagging in your application is an if statement and a read command. However, if you tend to reinvent the wheel, and then you've got to have the time to test in every scenario, um, run a new project, which is writing a feature flag specification standard and provide a your use case. And you'd better hope that nobody is going to ask you to change the format of your flag provider mechanisms or add some sort of other bells and whistles around it, because then you have to go and rebuild it all over again and again. Um, so that being said, there are easier ways, both free and paid, uh, which can help you getting, get up and running with feature flagging in no time. Um, so obviously, we're here at the Open Feature Summit today. Um, that's one that provides standards or frameworks um, or other services for feature flags. And you can also go to the CNCF landscape web, web page, which that QR takes you to. And if you scroll down, you can find the feature flag section, and that's where you'll see uh, open feature. So now we can talk a little bit about what feature flags are not to be used for. Um, so these are a little bit different than application configuration values. Um, unlike variables, uh, that would love to use feature flags and should not be reused. If you have two different feature cases that are similar, uh, for the most part, make sure to always keep them separated and updated. Uh, reusing a feature flag later on can cause more harm than good. And complementary configurations are not something that should be left to feature flagging. Uh, for example, uh, use feature flagging to enable that experimental core thing that you're developing, but make sure to have a conditional statement to check for the configurations too. Um, if not, then you can find a way to roll back the flag. Um, and keep in mind that feature flags are great to check your experimental features, create some conditional deployments that isn't going to cost you an arm or a leg, um, or give your testing team the opportunity to check out, check out the next release uh, without going through a second deployment, maybe on a cloud provider, and then you forget to shut it down, and it ends up costing you a lot of money. So disclaimer, I work for Tigera, so does Reza. We're not um, in any way associated with Reddit. We don't know their staff, their systems, et cetera. Um, and in fact, I only taught Re Reza about Reddit about five months ago. He claimed he didn't like social media, and I was like, yeah, but this is different. And then I gave him some juicy subreddits, and then he's been hooked ever since. Um, but this is actually based on a true story. So Reddit runs on Kubernetes, and they're actually using BGP in order to scale and connect their massive environment. And to support BGP in their environment, Reddit uses Calico open source. So you might be asking, why, why are Reddit using Calico? Um, but typically, when anyone wants to do anything at scale, they've got really large clusters, lots of nodes. Um, they tend to end up using Calico after evaluating other options, uh, since it's known that Calico is a good CNI if you're looking to scale. 
So Reddit decides to upgrade their cluster. Um, they put in motion the upgrade plan, and then bang. Um, and before you say anything, they needed to update their cluster regularly. Um, says this online that they were upgrading regularly, um, and that's linked in the post-mortem that we have here. Um, so if you do scan this, it takes you to Reddit. It's quite a long post-mortem, so you might want to read that after or if this talk's really boring. You can read it now if you want. Um, but they were basically trying to upgrade their cluster. They were going from 123 to 124, which shouldn't be that big of a deal. And I think actually they had already just recently upgraded that cluster uh, before this incident. Um, but you can read more about their specific story there. Um, so as Winston Churchill once said, uh, never waste a good crisis. Um, but that upgrade basically took out Reddit for hours and hours and hours. Um, so let's go back to this previous slide. We just saw this diagram a few slides ago. Um, we can have a look at the Calico components and talk a little bit about what they're supposed to do. Um, so in Calico, BGP is established using BUD, which is another open source project that's been around for quite some time. And BGP is a feature, and it has a dedicated feature flag in our installation resource, which is our flag provider. Um, and then after you enable this feature, it will look for a couple of configuration files. Um, the first one being your BGP configuration manifest. And this tells BUD your BGP AS number and your BGP peers that are used to determine where your other BGP capable devices are. Um, so the BGP problem that was part of the Reddit Pi Day incident happened because Kubernetes 1.24 removed the master label from the control plane nodes, which was something that clusters using Calico were manually configured to look for in order to establish BGP with their peers. So due to this manual configuration, the cluster couldn't establish BGP since none of the nodes had the label to enable the bird uh, daemon. So learning this, I guess, from Reddit's outage, um, Calico moving forwards uh, did a couple of things or is still, in, uh, still doing a couple of things. Um, so one of them being that Calico is committed to improving the configuration experience, um, actually made a lot of changes, introducing an API server for Calico and the Tigera operator to help everyone with their installation, upgrade, and Calico maintenance, and continuously working on our documentation to have the necessary changes for providing a smoother experience for infrastructure teams. And I believe if you read through uh, the post-mortem that they put on Reddit, um, there were some things in there talking about Calico and how they were managing the upgrade. And then if you go down to the comments, uh, in there were also Calico devs, Project Calico devs chiming yeah. in um, and talking about um, changing these things um, and making it so that you could run these commands, do them using kubectl instead of calico ctl, etc. And there's links to um, PRs on our GitHub repo to fix this. So, in summary, uh, how do you upgrade your CNI without breaking the internet? And the answer is read the documentation. <laughs> so, um, and obviously, reading the Reddit postmortem. As well, it seems like they didn't have a lot of documentation. So I guess not just reading the documentation, codify or write down exactly what you're doing as well, along with reading the documentation. So there we go. <clears throat> so thank you very much. Awesome. Give it up for Jen, everybody. Let's do one more first talk of the summit. Woo! All right, so let me just get the backdrop on. I said I had one job. What? That one. Huh, there we go. Um, amazing. So um, Jen has kicked us off with an amazing talk. Go and check out all of that stuff. Jen, if they want to find you or Tigera, are, is Tigera or Project Calico, are they anywhere? Like, where would they look to find um, us? We're at, we'll get, we have a booth at KubeCon all week, so we'll be there all week. Awesome. And we have Calico Con this afternoon. Amazing. As well. And if they want to find you on social media, can they find you on any of the channels? Yes, Map Girl, awesome. but with two L's. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks. All right. One last round of applause for Jen, everybody.